y'all welcome back to my channel and today I'm going to show you how to do the straight stitching and the zigzag stitching on the Janome Arctic Crystal. So first of all your thread. Since this has a vertical spool holder it goes straight up and down you're supposed to use stacked thread versus cross wound thread. If you have cross wound thread and, or cross wound thread you like, which I do, I, I almost always use cross wound, you can use a spool holder to make it feed correctly. And if you have some questions about this, I'll put a link in the description to where I'm talking about the spool holder and the differences between crossed and stacked. But for the demonstration, I'm going to go ahead and use some stacked thread. You can use either spool pin you want. I'll just go with the first one. The reason that it has two is because this has the capability to use a twin needle, which I'll be doing a video on shortly. So that's why you'd have to have the other one. But for now, um, you're just going to use some stack thread on the first needle. And if you've not learned yet how to thread your machine and or the bobbin, I also have two earlier videos on that, which I will link to the description. So let me come around to the other side and we'll just get started with some straight stitching. So let's start off talking about these two dials. This dial is your pattern selector and this dial is your stitch length. So for our straight stitches, we're only going to be looking at A and B. These are the two straight stitches. Now A is with the needle in center position and B is with the needle to the left. If you go past the B one little click, all of these little marks right here, those are for zigzag stitching, so we don't want those. Make sure you're right on the B, or I'm going to go on the A because I like this, the needle in the center of my foot. There are times when you'll need to go to the left, but for now we're going to go to A. And this over here is your stitch length. How, do you want a really short stitch or a, a long stitch? So I'm just going to go with Oh, about a three right now. That way you'll be, uh, be able to see it a little bit better. So once you have these two things set, we're ready to put some fabric under here. So we're all threaded up and we're ready to put some fabric underneath our presser foot. So just slip it under there, reach behind it, and let down your presser foot just like this. Now reach over here to your hand wheel. We need to put the needle down into the fabric. So turn the hand wheel towards you until the needle is down. Now when I get ready to start, I always hold my threads out to the left a little bit. And the reason for this is sometimes on the first stitch it will suck that thread down under there. So if you just hold it, you're not pulling on it, just, just hold it to keep it you know, in place. Then we are ready to stitch. And it's just that easy. When you want to go in reverse, press this all the way down. I know it kind of stops right here, but you have to press it all the way down and get the gas and it will back up. And once you get through, you lift the presser foot back up, roll the hand wheel towards you until the needle is in its highest position and pull your fabric out. If the fabric won't pull out, you don't have your needle in the highest position, so roll it backwards a little bit more, and then you can pull this out and snip off your threads. So that's going to be your stitch right there. So now let's look at how to lock these seams at the beginning of the end. One way is to put the fabric to where it is almost under the needle. It's just right there at the very edge of the opening. Hold your thread, turning the wheel to put the needle in it. Now I'm just going to take two or three stitches and then I'm going to hold down the reverse button and go backwards for those and then let it go and go forward again. And then when I get to the end of my seam, I'm going to hold the reverse down, go backwards a few, and then go back out. 
and lift the foot take the needle out and there's a locked seam now another way that some people like to do this is instead of going forward then backward then forward again they push the fabric a little bit further under the foot like to the edge of the foot before they ever get started well not to the edge of the foot but about half an inch past where the needle goes in put your needle in and then what they do is go in reverse first to the edge and then let it up and go forward again the ending is the same you go all the way to the edge hit reverse and then go back up now the problem with those is they do make a little bit of a bulk at the end of your seam so the other way is to just sew straight across without doing any reversing take your fabric out clip it off now you can turn over to the back side and lift up the bottom thread you see that loop that's coming up you can pull that loop down to the bottom and then tie these two threads in a knot that's a very classy way to finish a seam because you don't have any bulk but you just tie that into a knot and then you'd want to do that on the other end as well and then you clip your, your threads off and it's perfectly secure there on the bottom okay Okay, now let me show you how to turn a corner. Let's say you are sewing right along, and we're going to turn this corner right here. And you line your fabric up. When you're actually sewing something, all these little dashed lines over here on your, your plate, these are measurements. Your pattern will tell you that you have like a 5 8 inch seam allowance or a half inch or a quarter inch, whatever. You find that measurement over here, and you line up the edge of your fabric with that measurement and that will give you a good seam allowance that way your pattern will fit like it's supposed to but to turn a corner you're going to sew down to your turning point and when you stop you need to make sure that your needle is down in the fabric then lift your foot spin your fabric around the other way and then start sewing again just make sure there you go. just make sure that your your needle is down in the fabric before you lift that foot up and start to spin it so that you won't um, you won't get out of line but that is how you turn a nice sharp corner now let's look at the zigzag and this is the stitch that goes side to side so you're going to go to the B and then turn it just a little click more all of these stitches between B to C will get you a zigzag stitch the difference in this is going to be your stitch width do you want a really tiny stitch that just goes just a little bit or do you want one that really has a wide range of motion you're also going to be able to adjust this knob with your zigzag. Now this is your stitch length. So if you want a stitch that's really close together, kind of like a satin stitch or a solid bar stitch, you're going to be down here on the low end. If you want your stitches to be very open and far apart, then you're going to go all the way to the four. Don't go past the four. So first let's start with the very smallest one. Let me show you what that looks like and then we'll open it all the way up and see what difference it makes. Okay, we have our fabric under there. We have our presser foot down. Let's turn the needle so that it's down into the fabric and then I'm going to grab these tails and hold them off to the side. And I have it set at just a couple of marks past the B and on number one.
Now, you can see that gave us a really tiny little zigzag, but it's pretty open. So, let's move our settings and see what differences we get. Okay, for this stitch, I'm going to turn my knob all the way to the C, all the way. And let's look at what a difference it makes on our pattern. So here's your two differences. Now, both of these were on stitch length one, but this one was on the width closest to the B. This one was closest to the C. So that affected how wide the stitch is. Now I'm going to roll the stitch length dial all the way around to four, and let's see what that does. Now you get a really open zigzag stitch. Okay? So you just have to play with it with a little scrap of fabric and see exactly what, you know, what's going to suit your needs. But that is your zigzag stitch. And that is all you need to know right now in order to do some straight stitching or some zigzag stitching. And like I said, I'll post those um, related links down in the description. If this was helpful, please hit that subscribe button, give it a thumbs up, and come back to see me next time. We'll go into all the other stitches that this machine offers. Thanks for watching. Bye.